The first two things you learned to do in Smash were probably running and jumping. Jumping is an essential mechanic in video games, but in Smash, jumping is a fundamental movement option that lets you freely control your direction. What up guys, my name is Christoph, and in this video, we're gonna be going over the jumping mechanic in detail and how you can use our simple concept to win more games. And for our question of the day, when was the last time you jumped in real life? Does anybody really jump anymore? Seems like a strange thing to do. I think for me, the last time I jumped was maybe a year ago when I played basketball. All right, let me know in the comments down below. I'm actually kind of curious. And if you guys wanna get better at Smash Bros, make sure to click the description link below to go to proguides.com and find yourself a pro coach right now. So jumping is an essential part of Smash Bros. If for some reason you still don't think jumping is too important, try playing one game without jumping or go in a game as Little Mac and you'll realize how helpless you become in many situations. This part is obvious to pretty much anyone who doesn't even play the game, but jumping also opens up aerial attacks, which are typically some of the most useful attacks a character has. Has. Jumping is also crucial for recovery, giving you additional height to get closer to the stage. For that matter, plug in your controller, load up a match, and see if you can even resist jumping in the first place. Probably not, and that proves to you that you have certain jumping habits. But sometimes we develop bad habits. Having a habit isn't inherently a bad thing. In fact, having a wealth of good habits is essential for doing just about anything at a high level of skill. This is the logic behind muscle memory. But you must try to limit the bad habits you're creating for yourself and building good habits. When it comes to jumping in Smash, there are plenty of situations where jumping is a great option, but there are just as many where it can get you killed. Let's start off with the most common example of a bad jumping habit. We mentioned earlier that jumping is a great resource for recovery thanks to additional height it grants you. Well, as soon as something becomes universally recognized as good, there's counterplay developed for it. That's the nature of an active metagame. Double jumping back to the stage is an extremely common habit amongst newer players for two reasons. One, no one wants to fall down too low and hit the bottom blast zone, so recovering high just feels safer, because you can't fall up. And two, because if you see an opponent jumping off stage to edgeguard you, jumping seems like the most straightforward means of avoiding their attack. Sadly for the double jumping player, the metagame has eaten up this option years ago, and a double jump back to the stage is the first thing any experienced player will look for after they launch you off stage. They'll jump towards you and aim an attack to hit slightly above your current location so that they catch you jumping. Additionally, if a player gets hit out of their double jump off stage, they'll no longer have a jump to aid their recovery, so this can gimp many characters. When you get hit off stage and need to recover, it's generally best to recover low and conserve your resources. If your opponent is coming after you, try drifting away from them and then go for a neutral air dodge if they keep moving closer. Since you've saved your jump, almost any character can still recover from this position and by this point your opponent has probably already attempted to hit you and or given up. Keep in mind that being off stage is a disadvantageous position, so you can still get punished for drifting away and air dodging, but doing this requires your opponent to be extremely patient to hit you. If you're playing at a skill level where you get punished for this, you probably already understand that mixing up your options is crucial, and even this bad double jump can be the right choice if your opponent doesn't expect it. As a higher level mix-up, you can also intentionally double jump outside of your opponent's range to bait their attack, but don't try this stuff until you've first broken your bad habits. The offstage double jump back to stage is easily the most common jumping habit and probably the single most common habit in the game, but there are plenty of other bad jumping habits as well. Aerial attacks are a huge part of Smash gameplay and naturally you need to jump in order to use them. This is especially common out of shield where many aerials can help escape pressure. Because of this, jumping out of shield is a very common habit, but a less obvious one too. Although jumping is very fast, if someone hits your shield and mashes a fast attack right afterward, they'll most likely catch you if you jump out of shield. Your opponent might not even realize that they're hitting you because you jumped, but experienced players will take note of your habits and intentionally throw out attacks to call you out for jumping out of shield. If you're going to jump out of shield, it's typically best to do so with a fast rising retreating aerial. Even so, this is only worth going for if you have a very fast aerial that can punish your opponent's actions, otherwise consider rolling away or waiting after someone hits your shield if you don't have a guaranteed punish. 
Jumping out of shield is a common habit among players who use lots of falling aerials in neutral. In order to perform a falling aerial, you first have to jump and wait for your descent so the aerial will come out on the way down. This is an essential method for spacing many aerials because rising aerials may not hit opponents on the ground and there will typically be much more lag given the player has to drop a greater distance to land after swinging. Falling aerials, however, can be a big commitment as well. This is because your character is completely vulnerable during the ascent of your jump before you swing the aerial on the way down. This leaves you wide open to get hit by rising aerials or close grounded moves. To avoid this, you should jump from a distance for your falling aerials. Your goal should be to only get close to your opponent when you're already low enough to swing the aerial. Be very careful how you jump in neutral, always keeping in mind that there is greater risk to jump near an opponent. Double jumping to recover is not the only example of a jump habit in disadvantage. We mentioned that this was a natural response to avoid an impending attack, and this applies to juggling as well. It's very common to see players double jump when they are being juggled in order to avoid another attack. Although it's not as easy to call out as a jump back to the stage, skilled players will look for this habit as well and intentionally aim their aerials higher when juggling you to catch your jump. Jumping above juggling can be a good option to feel your opponent out at first, but you don't want to do this every time. You can mix up your disadvantage state with a fast attack or a neutral air dodge, both of which can beat your opponent if they opt for a high aerial. So as exemplified by all of these common habits, it's clear that jumping is very often an escape option. However, another situation where many players jump is on platforms. To escape platform pressure, lots of players like to jump off the platform to gain some distance. However, this can be extremely punishable as well. Players who notice this habit will simply aim aerials above the platform to catch your jump or attack upwards through your shield. It's typically a safer pressure to go for since you can't shield drop through platforms in Smash Ultimate, so the player on the defense has limited options while on a platform. It's generally good practice to hold shield on platforms and wait for your opponent to commit to something that gives you time to escape. Don't forget that you can also roll to the other side of the platform to throw off their spacing or drop through if they move away. All of these examples so far deal with grounded jumps and double jumps, but there's another type of jump that leads to bad habits as well, ledge jumps. A ledge jump is often regarded as one of the best ledge options because it's hard to punish on reaction. This leads many players to opt for ledge jump too often, which can be easily punished if the opponent expects it. What makes this habit even worse though is that people will often accompany their ledge jump with another action such as an attack or air dodge. This action can make it harder to punish immediately, but typically the additional activity makes punishing the jump on reaction much easier. Releasing ledge and double jumping is another jump habit from ledge. This is usually accompanied by an aerial intended to hit your opponent for standing too close to the ledge. This can be a great option for some characters, but it's easily punishable if the onstage opponent stands further back and they can intentionally bait this out by moving forward first. If you get hit for trying to double jump aerial from ledge, you'll wind up off stage without your jump, which is a very bad position as we explained earlier. So mix up your ledge options as well as their timing and focus on what your opponent is trying to cover. But once you successfully get off the stage, the battle isn't always over. Now you're trapped in the corner where you can no longer run backwards to avoid your opponent's attacks. This leads many players to jump from this position because every other option feels like too much of a commitment. As with every example, this leaves you vulnerable and you can get caught out with rising aerials here. Try to take note of how your opponent ledge traps and don't make the same mistake twice. Some players will play a bit tricky by running towards you on the ground to bait the jump as well, so keep your cool and see through their bluff. Timing is key in the corner too. If you wait long enough, your opponent might overcommit, and if they often go for a play instead, you can choose your escape option sooner as well. 
Because jumping is so natural and such an important aspect of gameplay, it can be very difficult to distinguish bad jumps from good ones. This is why jumping habits are so common, but if you go into game with the intention to focus on these specific situations, you can begin to catch on and break those habits. We hope this video helped you guys clean up your gameplay. Once again, it's been Kristoff. Thank you guys so much for watching, and good luck in your next few games.